Okay, hello everyone. I am Hanin Jadallah. I am English teacher at Smart Prep School P in Gaza, Palestine. I'm here today for a special session about the creative aspect of Palestinian kids in Palestine. So my presentation will be about sharing our stories with the world outside through remote theater. Here we go. So the whole thing started in 2018 when I was part of this amazing training course led by Nick Belpro, the founder and the coordinator of the Hansa project, when he did a kind of training for teachers in Gaza to establish their drama clubs. And I was so inspired by the idea of having a kind of space for the kids where they belong to and have the ability to speak up and perform plays and do activities with somebody outside Gaza. Because those kids are preventing from every single chance to leave Gaza. Most of them never met anyone from another country. So it's a way to get them involved culturally and internationally with the people outside. Uh, I would like to say that I am so thankful for Global Issues for having me, having my presentation as part of their IATFL presentations. And Global Issues is IATFL, a uh, small friendly community of English language educators who promote critical thinking, critical literacy, and critical teaching within ELT. So thank you very much for having my presentation there. And the first step to go for this workshop is to know why we can't do anything without valuing what we're doing. So we need to know why do we set our drum clubs in our schools? First of all, the drum club is the space where those students find themselves dig deeply into their potentials and have their voices be heard loudly and clearly in the outer world. Number two, it's the most interesting and motivating way because those kids are doing drama activities in the drama club. They performing plays, they're writing stories, they're telling different things to the volunteer in another country of the world. So they learn the language very spontaneously and very authentically because they don't have the chance to practice it in their own speaking community. So it's, it's just a perfect chance for them to speak the language very spontaneously with somebody who's very experienced in this from another country. Three, it's a way of survival for Palestinian kids because, you know, Palestinian kids are living a very hard life in Gaza. They may listen to lots of fearful things every night. So when they go to school in the morning, they just have the chance to survive through this. They just feel very anticipated to meet the volunteer from the, another country, and they feel so excited to have uh, kind of very interesting activities and perform lots of plays together to somebody who lives in another country, which is a dream for them to go out of Gaza. And then it's definitely a way of celebrating themselves when they are very young, but they still can speak up, tell stories, stand very tall in front of the screen, and perform plays as if they were one of the most famous movie stars. So that's a lot about celebrating themselves and show their talents to somebody in another country or show their talents in online conference or to another group of kids in another school outside Gaza uh, of their talents of acting and perform, performing plays. And this 
way of teaching the language and engaging the learners in a kind of drama club, it's the best way I've ever known to build up a generation that well equipped enough to lead the world one day. And this is the ultimate goal of teaching our kids. This is the ultimate goal of learning the language to be able to interact and lead and be the pioneer of the world one day. First of all, before going through the steps of creating faith, what is remote theater? Remote theater is a new kind of theater which was developed by the kids in Gaza and originally uh, came from uh, the Hansa project to help those people in Gaza, young people to create and perform and play different roles to somebody in another country. And I just chose this picture because it has to do everything with all the techniques of remote theater. So you can, this is a shot was taken from the play called The Screen. Uh, the Screen is written by Nick Belbro and was performed by many students around the world. One of them is Amal Bukhari's students, a brilliant teacher from Gaza and drama expert. And she has many achievements of her students performing a play. So this girl is holding a candle really close to the camera and also her face fills the screen. And this is the amazing thing about remote theater. So one interesting thing about remote theater techniques is that the girl is a kind of interacting with the audience using her eyes and also holding an object very close to the camera and filling the faces filling the whole screen. So that's very interesting. And I'm going to try out some techniques with this script here. So let's practice some techniques. This is a conversation between the sea and the baby soul and is taken originally from a play called Oh My Home, uh, performed and created by Palestinian kids in Gaza. So I'm going to try uh, performing this to you and you are going to do this later with another extract. So what we have got here is, this is the sea and it starts narrating the whole story. So it goes like this. I am that part of nature that always giving you peace of mind. You can sit by my beaches and look at the sun when it lies. I have this pale blue color mixing with the sky. And I have always been a symbol of love and a source of life. But now, now, shall I be a source of death for this child, for this child? and this man and his wife and the baby, the baby sank. Yet, I can hear, I can hear what her soul wants to tell me. Her soul wants to tell me that one day. So just commenting on this scene, you can see that my face is filling the screen. I'm trying to interact with you and I am showing different parts of my body along with facial expressions to convey the message. And here we have another character, which is the baby soul. It's a kind of flashback moment. And if you wanna try this out in your own classes, you can have somebody coming from behind 
and the first person is doing this and the other person is just coming from behind and start to, to say like the C is going to be silent at this moment and the other character is going to say once upon a dark night so you can have another person saying the lines yeah so these are some of the techniques of remote theater the eye contact with the camera being really close interacting with the scene with facial expressions sad expressions happy expressions and so on and having people from behind saying things while the first person is just silent or something. This is some of the techniques of remote theater. And you can do it not only with the plays, also with different activities through your online teaching. And I'm going to put in the, the link for the remote theater website so you can you approach it later. Okay, so let's go on with the process of making plays. Okay, so let's go through a framework for remote theater. So it could be for everyone in the classroom. Everyone has a role of doing something, either writing something or reading or be engaged in the discussion or even performing something. So it's really for big classes as well as small classes. And it's for high achievers, talented students, as well as the ones who are feeling shy or lack of confidence to speak up. So the whole process starts with the students writing a story on a topic of their choosing. And this is the most interesting thing about it. Because as I said before, the drama club is a space where the kids belong to, where they can talk about their wishes, their dreams, they can move easily, they can fly to another part of the world without being really traveled. So it's a kind of, you start from the students need, they do something they love and they belong to. And here, we can see the very first draft of a short story written by one of my amazing students called Noor Ziada. She was the one who wrote this and she was inspired by this image of a Syrian boy who found washed up by a Turkish beach in 2015, I think. She was feeling really sad about him. She was feeling really bad. So she just wrote this as a kind of story. So those kids are not only reflecting on what, whatever they experienced in their homeland, they're not only talking about imaginative dreams, but they have the ability to look at different aspects of people's life and just commented on it. As we can see here, the first draft of the story when No wrote, when you look at me, what do you feel? Of course you will say you feel relaxed. And she's talking about the sea, which we are going to watch the whole play later. So this is the very first step. And they're writing the stories as a kind of individual homework. They're doing it at home and they writing them in English. And that's because my group is between 12 and 15, so they can do it in English. If you're teaching very young learners, you can adapt it a little bit, like giving them pictures or helping them in a way or using their mother tongue for some of the things that they are going to write about. And this is very amazing because the kids need language they go away to their houses, they search for language in English to be included in their stories. Number two, just choosing one story. So I have a big class. I 
to sex groups, it depends on how big your class is. And each group has from five to six students with a group leader. And the group leader is not the most talented person, but the most experienced person in doing remote theater. So if I have somebody from ninth grade and I have somebody from seventh grade, so obviously the seventh graders are not involved before in such activities. So when they come to school, they're being exposed to the, for the first time to this kind of thing. So the ninth graders are more experienced in this. So they will be the group leaders and the series goes on every year like this. So they have the leader. Each one has uh, their own short story that's written earlier as a homework. And they just come, as you can see in the picture, they sit in a circle and they start talking about their stories. A lot of learning is happening at this stage because they're reading their stories to each other, they're listening to the language. Already, they search for the language they wrote it in their houses. So, and they are discussing it. They know how to discuss it in groups to finally agree on one story to be converted into a play. And I have to say, it's not only about the language, it's also about teaching them about life about respecting each other's point of views, about listening to somebody saying something and appreciating what they're saying. So it's not only about learning the language, it's also about learning about life. And this is what we all about as teachers, to teach our kids not only the subject and the stuff and the language, but also teaching them more about life. Okay, so at this stage, the students are going on to make the story poster for the story they just chose together. And I remember this group, they were doing a story about Palestine as a group, and they were doing the poster like this. And this is a very critical step in the whole process, because it's where the students learn how to overcome their shyness. So they're doing this not to a volunteer in another country. It's just the first step towards helping them to speak up to another person. So they're doing this to their classmates. So a lot of learning is happening now because they know how to speak up in front of other people. They're speaking, they're reading from the poster and also it's a chance for the teacher to come in and scaffold the language. And sometimes they ask you, oh, I wrote this word, but I'm not sure about the pronunciation. So can you help me a little bit? So it's just a way to help the kids to feel confident about their learning that they created themselves, which are the stories. So here in this video, we can see them presenting their story poster in front of their classmates to overcome the shyness that may happen in the last stages. Here we go. And today we are going to write a story about Palestine. Uh, but Palestine is about uh, some girls. We have uh, five or four characters. Uh, and there is there a very beautiful girl called Palestine. One of, the, one of the most beautiful girls in the world had built friends in, in her life and was living in peace and safety. Suddenly, one day... Um... And at this point, I remember that Haya asked me about the word for shadowing. So she's a kind of writing yet, but she's not really sure about the pronunciation. And I helped her. So it's not only the group who listened to me scaffolding, it's also their classmates learn new language about other stories. Okay. Number four, writing a script. And this is the first step towards creating the play after doing the poster and doing the story is that they are going to work towards having a template of play. And this picture 
shows the very first draft of the script for Oh My Home. And this is a kind of group work. I gave them a model script and they just look at it in terms of the features of writing a script, the stage directions, and etc. And they just go on converting their story into a kind of script. In the first step, we saw a picture of the story where she was saying something like, you look at me, you feel relaxed, and blah, blah, blah. And here in the script, she, they were working together towards writing it as a kind of like characters, stage directions, dialogues. So she said at the beginning, the sea is telling the story. So she indicates the narrator and they were agreeing on the number of, the, of characters they're gonna have at this point. And we can see here in the paper, the sea and it starts the dialogue. So they trying to write a dialogue. I am natural element and I am relaxing your mind when you sit on my peaches. And it's very connected to the last version of the script as you will see in a minute. Number five, the reformulation stage, which is the very important area in this process for the students to learn from the teacher as well as valuing their own learning and achievements. So each group leader, after working, after taking time to look at the model script and writing their own, each group leader hands the script to me, to the teacher. And I rewrite it as a kind of edited version. And the most important point I would like to highlight here, that I don't change that a very special voice of the learners. So you can't change the message, you can't change the content. It's not your place as a teacher because your ultimate goal is make them learn and do something they want. The only thing that we do as teachers at this stage is to reformulate in terms of grammatical accuracy, the spelling, the vocabulary and the wording, etc. So it's a kind of improving the language, not the message. Then I give them the edited version as groups. Each group took the edited version of their script without initially without the first draft because I wanna challenge them and ask them to look at the changes with it because it would be very easy for them to notice the changes if they have the two versions the edited one and the drafted one. But if you give them the edited one without the first one, they would have to put more brainy efforts in thinking, oh, where's the change here? Do you remember when we wrote blah, blah, blah? Do you remember when we, oh, it's not, and they can notice sometimes the advanced language that the teacher uses at this stage. It's a very, very important stage because you come in, you edit the language a little bit, they have their message as it is, so they feel that they're learning, but also a lot of respect is given to them because there's no change in the content or the message. And also through the discussion, imagine nothing could be more wonderful in the world than hearing those kids, little kids, just staying together in a circle and having the edited version in front of them looking at all the changes as if they are criticizing their, their own thing that they did. They are, oh, look at this, oh, this has changed into this. And we will have a look at this. This is a picture of the students with their leader. They have uh, the edited version. You can see that they have a kind of sticky notes. They write, oh, what kind of changes have you noticed here? And they are very close to each other. They're like a beehive. Everyone has a role of reading a line and notice the changes. And you can see on their faces that they feel happy about it. Of course they would. This is their own achievement. And they are holding the responsibility towards making it better and better and better. 
Here we can see two versions of the first draft script written, handwritten and the other one typed, the one by the teacher and the one by the kids. And the highlight you can see in these two pictures, the highlight in the one on the right is by the students, the one on the left is by the teacher, but they highlight the changes, not me. But the highlight in the edited version indicates uh, the changes that I, I did in terms of, as I said, grammatical accuracy and a language, not in terms of just changing anything they wrote. Like you can see here in the first draft narrator, one day there is a rich woman who in high class society that has a company and many employers and everyone respects her. And the edited version, once upon a time, there was in front of there is, because it's more accurate to say there was when you're telling a story from the past, who had all the blessings one might wish for in life. And this is not changing in their mood, but a kind of giving them the chance to be exposed to a more advanced language than they did in their original version. Number six, the physicalization and rehearsal. Everyone has to wake up now and speak up. I ask each group leader to establish a timetable for their members. So for instance, here we have the group leader, Sarah, and she given them a time. Okay, on Monday, we have to start our training sessions. And the girls are doing training sessions themselves without me coming in at this point. They just took the final script, tried to assign roles for everyone, like the group leader discussed with them, uh, what role do you wanna be? What role do you wanna be? And then after agreeing on all the roles, they just start rehearsing the script. I at some point, I just come in and see their performance. You have to praise the students at this stage because they're doing an amazing job. They're still young, but they are leaders and they are discussing things. They are authors. And in a minute, they will be famous actresses when they perform there to a volunteer from another country. I just come in, I watch them. Even if it's not as I want, you just say, wow, you're doing it amazing. But I just, because when you give, when you spread positivity to the kids, they just believe in you and they just listen to what you are going to say and not feeling that you're criticizing them. So a lot of learning is happening at this time. They're rehearsing the script, they're listening to each other, they're correcting each other in terms of stress and intonation. They did their best and the teacher came in, came in and just tell them how they are going to improve it. The interesting thing about this stage is that in your own classroom, you make, it's not making lots of difference if the students have the word wrong in terms of the message. It's just making difference that you want your kids to pronounce it correctly. But with a play, they should get it right to convey the message to the audience to be understandable. So you have to come in and make suggestions about the stress and intonation. Like with the one I did at the beginning, I am that part of nature that gives you peace of mind. There are several aspects that we need to stress to convey our message of the play. And also, it's important for the audience to understand them. Otherwise, it's what's the value of doing this? So it's amazing how the students are learning in this kind of stage, physicalization and rehearsal. And it's a nice chance for them to be exposed to a healthy pronunciation of the words without being offended as if they may feel in the classroom. Also, they feel a kind of responsibility towards the, their own accomplishment. So I'm telling you from my own experience, they want to get it right. They put all their feelings and all their efforts 
to get it right and they able to at the end. Seven, it's the window to the world. Now, those kids can't travel. They can't leave Gaza because of the blockade and the restrictions. But the Hansa project is giving them wings to fly, to cross every border and sail across every ocean to tell the whole world how innovative and creative they are, aren't they? They're very creative. They're from nothing, they create something. When they're supposed to feel very weak, they're strong in the front of the screen. You can see how they're standing really tall, full of confidence and speak and they're together working collaboratively in front of this amazing guy that I worked with, the famous playwright, Peter Oswald. So he was doing an amazing job watching them and giving them feedback. They start performing the play that they have written at some point, and they just started to show him. They feel full confidence after all these stages they pass through, and they feel very equipped to perform the story in front of him. They stand really tall. Now, Peter's giving a kind of feedback, and he was giving them a kind of written feedback, as you can see here in the email. He sent me an email and I read them. He, he, he's, he, he gave them a kind of oral feedback, of course, in the session, but also he highlights in an email. He wrote some feedback from today and he starts writing it for the students to keep a record and they go back to their sessions and just uh, make it better and better, the performance. And because of the pandemic, we went on doing a lockdown theater. So Palestinian can't give up. And the Hansa project doesn't know how to give up. So it keeps showering us with lots of creative ideas. So during COVID, we took our drama clubs online and we were helping the students to perform plays as a kind of lockdown theater, which means that each actor or actress doing this using one camera from their own houses. And that's amazing because they're taking the responsibility of their learning. And here an example of Luzanne Mata, a teacher from Gaza, a brilliant teacher, who, were help, who was helping her students to perform a play called Adore. And she was giving them beautiful, beautiful feedback, very informative. Those are very young learners, even than, younger than the learner that I taught. And those are, I think, 10. And they, the amazing thing that it's just their first time to start knowing about the play and look at what they can achieve, look at the discussion. Excellent, very good. طبعا, where is the key? Where is the key? Dauru ala. Dauru ala. Where is the key? I'm here, I'm here. I found it. Very good. Now try to open the door with a key. I can't. I can't. Mm. I can't too. No. Taib, in toiletam, you can't open the door. So you I are are you are you happy or sad? Sad. Yeah. Sad. So show me you are sad, sad now. You can't open the door. It's sad. Mm. I can't open the door. I can't open the door. Mm. I can't and open the door. I can't open the door. The door. I can't open the door. Mm. And now you are wondering what's behind this door. Mm, I wonder what's behind the door. Mm. Yeah, I want to know what's I wonder what's behind the door. Mm -hmm. I I 
behind. What's inside? What's inside? Okay. Can we open the door? What's on the other side? Can we open the door? Or can we open it? What's on the other side? What's on the other side? Can we open it? Other side? What, uh, what's on the other side? Can I open the door? What's on the other side? What's on the other side? What's the other side? What's on the other side? What's on, What's the, on the other side? Very good, Sarah. What's on the other side? You're eager to know. You want to know what's on the other side. The box. Great. Okay, start now. Oh, let me see what I have. Uh, what I have. Let me see what oh, yes, okay. the box is. Oh, here is a pair of socks, a pen, a book, a golden ring, a feather from a chicken wing, a glass, a pencil, a teddy bear, and look, a famous block of wood. We can't hear you now, Rose. Rose, we can't hear you now. So just... When you show the, the last thing, what's the last thing here? A famous lock of hair. Okay, so leave the box. Leave, this is the last thing you want to show us, yeah? yeah? Okay, so leave the box at this moment and come really close with the object to the camera. Closer, like this. Look, I'm going to try it with my phone, yeah? Okay, I like this. Really close. And show the object. Okay? Can you show me? Just show me how you are going to do it. Yeah, that's very good. Speak okay. now. And look! A famous lock of hair. It belonged to a princess. A wonderful thing. But sorry. Sorry. Uh, Jane, can you wait for a bit? I just wanted to give her feedback on this. Okay, right. That's okay. really fantastic, Rose. The acting is just brilliant. Something tiny I wanted to know on. I wanted you to bring real objects, like the book. I want you to bring a real object of a book, a book, a real book, okay? And just show it really close to the camera be before you throw it away, okay? That would be much more powerful than just showing anything and throw it away, okay? Because there is a kind of interaction between the object and the camera and the audience. You got what I mean? Yeah. So you just show each object to Lujain. At this moment, Lujain, you're not mm. out of stage. You have to react to what Rose is saying yeah. because you're really waiting for something that could make up for the string you break earlier. So you have to react. You're not, you're not relaxing at this moment. This is a very critical moment for the audience not only to see Rose, how she's doing the thing, but also to see how you are reacting to this mm -hmm. because you're in the role, not out of the role. Okay, okay Lujain? But that's yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah, that's great. But Lujain, we want to see your face really close when you speak. Thank you, Wally. You are so kind. I will take this herb. But I must find the guitar string before it's too late. The wedding tomorrow. It cannot wait. Brilliant, Lujain. But I try to slow down a little bit. Try to speak slower than this. Oh, Can you okay. do it again? Can you do it again? Thank you, Wally. You are so kind. I will take this turn. 
but I must find the guitar string before it's too late. The wedding tomorrow, it's gonna wait. Okay, come closer from the moment you say the wedding is tomorrow. The wedding is tomorrow. Okay. It can't wait or I can't wait? It. It can't wait. Okay. The wedding is tomorrow. So just come closer and make a kind of interaction with the camera because you want to engage the audience in this very critical moment. Okay? To give okay. an impression that you're feeling really bad and stressed because you don't have the thing for the wedding. So you just say, the wedding is tomorrow. I, it can't wait. Yes? Mm. Before okay. the other thing is coming. The wedding's tomorrow. It's gonna wait. And show us a little bit of um, facial expressions on your face. Because I can't sense now that you're really stressed. I need to okay. feel it. As, as an audience who's watching you, I need to feel it. So you just say, for instance, like this. I'll put my camera on to show you. You can say, the wedding is tomorrow. It can't wait. Okay. And you look somewhere in the space as if you're thinking about something. Okay? Right. Right. Please do it again for the last yeah. time. The wedding's tomorrow. It's gonna wait. Right? Yeah, much better. Yeah, much better. Okay, so this is an example of how you could work with script and give feedback direct play and give a kind of feedback which is really useful for the kids to improve their performance. Okay, so remote theater is not only about kids in Gaza performing play, it's just spreading everywhere in the world. As we can see those amazing Vietnamese teachers performing a play called It's Your Choice, which was originally created and performed by Palestinian kids. Isn't it amazing? that we can see how the Hansa project and remote theater are spreading everywhere globally and internationally now, having the, the, the Palestinian kids' voice be heard everywhere in every spot of the world. And it has all the techniques of theater that we talked about earlier. Now, the Palestinian kids, are telling their stories very confidently, very passionately, and they're finding a way towards a peaceful and respectful future. So I would be very happy if you wanna try part of this process with your learners. And I am happy to give you support or to link you to our groups in Palestine through the Hansa project. Here is our three books of the plays. They were written originally by Palestinian kids, Popcorn and other plays, Welcome to Earth and Toothbrush and other plays. So here's the link to the Hansa Project page and you can buy these books to donate it to Palestinian kids. And here's my email if you want to be in touch for a kind of link up or just to ask questions about how to implement this framework in your own context. Thank you for listening and live long the Hansa project, Ayatifu and all Palestinian kids wherever they are. Thank you, goodbye.